Hi folks, welcome to chapter two. Uh, we're gonna look at radical functions. This is outcome R13, and we're going to graph and analyze radical functions, and it's gonna be limited to functions involving only one radical. All right, so let's get on. So here we are going to look at uh, functions, radical functions. These are the, of, the, of the root variety. Okay, so things that have like a, remember a square root symbol and there's a variable underneath, or you could have something like y equals four times and the cube root of five plus x, for instance. So first we're gonna introduce our parent function. So our parent function here is uh, y equals the x, the, sorry, y equals square root of x. And just to get familiar with it, we're just gonna uh, get a quick table of values. So if I take negative two and I put it under the square root sign, um, this, well, it's undefined for now. Uh, we don't deal with numbers, uh, negatives under the square root. So we're just gonna cross those off and write undefined here. Uh, for zero, if we plug in a zero there, we get zero, so the square root of zero equals zero. Square root of one is one. Square root of two is the same as the square root of two. And the square root of four is equal to two. So just quickly plot those points on my graph. And this parent function is what we are going to be transforming. So you want a nice curved line and then an arrowhead at the end. Okay, so just uh, take note that our our graph, our equation starts here, our graph starts at zero, zero. And then the first nice point that we have is one comma zero. And the next nice point we have is four comma two. Okay. Now, the values of x cannot be negative, just to restate that. Also, since it's a function, each x value has only one corresponding y value. And this is the domain and range of it. So x is greater than or equal to zero, or you could write it in interval notation here, square bracket, zero comma, up to infinity, round bracket. And y is greater than zero. So see, x is greater than zero is over here, and y is greater than zero, that's up. All right, now, um, as the next example we're gonna look at is we're going to sketch the following graphs. Now it's important to note that you have to be familiar with your parent function here. So let's look at this one first and notice how f of x has been changed. So originally we had f of x and now it's become f of x plus two. So you see the change was underneath the root sign. That means we're going to move two units to the left. So if you recall, the move is uh, opposite the connecting sign when it's involved with the x here. So originally we had our points here, here, and here. And each of those points are going to be moved left two. So I'm now here, this one moves left two, and this one moves left two to here. So this is now my transformed function. Okay, so this is y equals square root of x plus two. And now for this next example here, this is where a parent function would have been. And this is one unit down. All right, so each of these points move one unit down, one unit down, one unit down from the parent. And there is my graph for that one. You could also look at this one and note that if it was a change on f of x, then it would be f of x minus one. So I could also write it like that in function notation. All right, so um, in this example, it says using the given equations, explain the transformations needed to transform the graph of y equals square root of x. And then it wants you to sketch then we're gonna sketch each graph and we're also gonna state the domain. So we're gonna talk about what input values are allowed. 
And keeping in mind that these are square roots and what's the key that we have to remember there. So the reflection over the x-axis, uh, this is caused by that negative sign right there. A vertical stretch factor, a vertical stretch by a factor of two, that is caused by that two right there. And a horizontal shift left one unit, that is because of that one right there. Okay, so our parent function would have been here, here, and here. Reflecting over the x-axis means that this point, well, it doesn't change. This point moves down here, and this point moves down here. Okay, so that's taken care of. That's our reflection over our x-axis. So just very lightly, I'm going to sketch that in just so we don't lose it. And then I'm going to have a vertical stretch factor by 2. So that means that all of my y values are going to be multiplied by 2. So this 0 multiplied by 2 is 0. 1 multiplied by 2 is here now. And this multiplied by 2 now becomes 4. So it's way over here. It kind of goes off my graph. So you kind of have to like extend the axis which is what I've done here. Um, and sometimes that will happen. So just extend your graph and deal with it. Now we're going to move everything horizontal. Shift left one unit. So where were we here? We moved everything down here. So we're here, here, and here now. So everything is going to move left. So we're going to go left one. So this is where I'm ending up. This is going to move to here. This point moves there left, and this point moves left here. So that's where I end up. Okay, now these are the points that I want to draw my graph with. And uh, make sure you indicate scale or at least label one of the points so that you know what's going on. And if you want, you can double check with a quick table of values to verify that these numbers work and your graph is drawn correctly. Okay, now this example B here, um, you notice it looks a little different here. You've got a 2 right beside the X. Uh, when, when that happens and there's no bracket, you have to make sure that you factor. Okay, so let's look at this and factor it so that we can apply the transformations correctly. So I'm going to take 2x minus 4 and this is what I need to factor. So I need to factor the 2 out. And now you get the correct transformations. Okay, just. So this is where you get your horizontal stretch by a factor of a half. So that's the inverse of the B number right there. Horizontal shift, right two units, that's from here. And vertical shift of one unit up, that's from the one right there. Okay, so originally my parent function was here, here, and here. And now I'm going to do the stretch of a half. So basically I'm going to take all my numbers and I'm going to cut them in half. Okay, uh, so this 4 becomes a 2. So now I'm here, here, and here. Okay, after I've done that, I'm going to horizontal shift two units right. So the right is this way. I'm going to go two units. And you know what? At the same time, I'm going to also go vertical shift by one. So I'm going to do those two at the same time. So this, I'm going to go one unit, two units, and then I'm going to go up. This, these ones, you have to be careful when they're on the half. You have to go one full unit and then one full unit and end up on a half number again. And this one here, go over two and up one. So your end point, okay, I need a nice curve here. Make sure that's a curve and not a straight line. So this end point is now at two comma one. All right. Uh, oh, we forgot to talk about the domain of the question just above. So let's reverse and let's go back here and look at the domain. So what x values are 
allowed to be inputted. So the domain here is x, let's see, the smallest value is negative 1, so x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay, it's going that way. And now here, let's look at our domain. So the smallest value of x that I have on my graph is 2, so everything is going to be, uh, let's see, x is greater than or equal to 2. That's for my graph. Now, if you notice, um, you know what, we'll talk about it in the next example. Okay, so here we're going to sketch the following. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to rearrange it so that it looks just like the other ones that we've been working with. So isolate your Y on one side, move everything over to the next, to the other side. And this is what we end up having. So subtract one on both sides. Now, once we've done that, we need to factor uh, what's underneath the root sign. So we're going to have y equals and then negative x minus 2 bracket. And we are going to have a minus 1. Uh, make sure that it doesn't look like that minus 1 is underneath the root sign. Okay, so I'll just clarify that up a little bit. Okay, so... Um, basically, what's happening is we are reflecting over y-axis because of that guy right there. We are moving right two units. We are going down one unit. Okay, so here, my 0, 0, it doesn't reflect because it just stays where it is. Um, Let's just kind of point out my original. So we're going to reflect everything. So this ends up here, and this ends up over here. Now I'm going to take everything, and I'm going to go right two units and down one. So now I'm there. So this one goes right two units and down one. And this one goes right two units and down one. Okay, so turn your page so that it's easy for you to make a nice curve here. And try to keep a uniform shape going. And put an arrowhead at the end. Your end point is now at 2, negative 1. Okay, so the domain for this one is x is less than or equal to 2. Um, there is another way to find the domain if you're not looking at the graph. So if we were to take this equation and just look at what's underneath the square root sign. So what's underneath the square root sign? Well, we know that we're not allowed to have this equal to um, a negative number. So reality, what I should have written was this. X, negative x, sorry, minus x plus 2 always has to be positive. And basically all you're going to do is solve this for x. And just recall when you're dealing with a negative and um, inequalities, you have to flip when you're solving. So here, let's just do that. Negative x plus 2 greater than 0. Subtract 2 on both sides. Negative x greater than or equal to negative 2. Now we have to switch the sign. So divide by negative 1 on both sides. And then you have to flip, flip that guy. So now we have x is less than or equal to 2. Oh, look at that. This ends up looking exactly like that. How exciting. Yay. Okay. So what you can do is you can go back to the other questions that we just did and you can verify them algebraically. All right. I'll let you do that on your own. Let's go on to example 4. Example 4 says write the equation of a radical function uh, whose domain is x is greater than or equal to 2 and whose range is y is less than or equal to 4. So I just started up a little sketch here uh, just outlining where x is 2 and where y is 4 and it has to have those both conditions. So uh, if I just kind of do like a, a, a shading of what's 
bigger than two and a shading of what's less than four, we're going to want to look at the area that both of them exist. Okay. So also you want to look at what happened to the endpoint. So the endpoint moved from zero, zero, and it had to go up four units. So that's up four and left uh, two. So that would make something like y equals, uh, I'm going to leave lots of space here, x minus 2. No, wait, that's not left, that's the right. Sorry. Right two units. So x minus 2. And then I have a plus 4 at the end here to make it go up. Now, notice that if I'm restricted here, I really can only go in that direction. I can't really do anything else. So my uh, original has flipped over the x-axis. So there's also a flip over x-axis. And in order to do that, I need to have a negative right there. So this works for your answer. That's one of the answers possible. Okay, now let's look at this example here. This will be the last one for the video and then we'll, you can do the other two left and uh, bring them to class and we'll have a look at them together. So questions that you have to ask yourself when you're gonna determine the equation of a function where you have a graph is how did the endpoint change? Um, so it was at zero, zero, that's our parent. Now it's at two, negative one. What direction is it pointing? So it's now pointing in the opposite direction. So it's done a reflection this way over, over the y-axis. So where is that negative sign gonna go? And then use another point on the graph so you can determine a possible stretch. So normally it's at zero, zero, and then you've got a one, one, and um, your you have that same kind of distance here. So this one doesn't have a stretch. So the next two that you're going to try on your own is going to have a stretch. So you're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. All right. Now this example. So let's write an equation. Well, we figured out that our, uh, let's see, our H value is two and our K value is negative one because we've moved two to the right and we've moved one down. All right, now we have to have a reflection over the y-axis, so that is going to make our b value negative. So we're gonna go flip that that way and we end up with y equals, so we've got our x minus two and leave your brackets for questions like this. So our B value is going to be negative one. There's no vertical stretch, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. All right. These two questions are a little more challenging than the one that I just did above. So I want you to try them. See if you can figure out this. I don't want to do these right now because there's two possible answers and I want to see which one you guys come up with. All right. So try some questions from the textbook and uh, good luck.